Good morning, everyone. This is Elisabeth Schauermann from the German Informatics Society, and um, I'm very happy to have you here today. I assume there will be people coming in over the next few minutes, but I will just start by telling you who we are and what we did and what we're going to do over the next one and a half hours. So I'm here today with my colleagues Lilian and Fritjof next to me and a bunch of amazing young people who convened yesterday to work on their positions to the Internet Governance Forum 2019. Um, you can see the hashtag here. It has been used uh, intensely um, if you want to give visibility to your own youth activities, you can use them, you can use the hashtag and we will see and retweet and give you hopefully a bit more visibility with your own activities as well. So what we're going to do now, I will very briefly give you an overview of what we did over the past few months and what we did yesterday. Then um, the people who drafted the youth positions will present them to you and give you a quick context of um, how they came to be and what we are trying to achieve with them. And then um, at the end of the session, you will have the opportunity to present your own youth initiatives in a brief way, two to three minutes, tell us what you're planning uh, for the next year, what you have been doing and how that fits in your regional and national context. Um, I will have to leave a bit early, but from when I'm leaving, my colleagues will take over. So, um, just a brief um, housekeeping note. So, the Youth ITF Summit has been a project by the German Informatics Society, and we have been supported by the German Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy, who are also the host of the IGF this year. So we've been very um, um, grateful to being given this official uh, state and visibility by them. And uh, we've also been supported by our partners, Google, the Vodafone Germany Foundation, Fraunhofer ICT Technology, Goethe Institute, the United Nations Association of Germany, and uh, we've been supported in a way by bringing delegates in by the Internet Society with the ISOC uh, Youth Ambassadors and the Council of Europe Youth Department with bringing in um, their delegates as well. And by that we have convened a lot of people, but um, before we get into that, just um, an overview of what brought us to to try and do that. So uh, a few months ago, we, we had an idea and we wanted to create an inclusive youth process that people from all world regions could participate in that wouldn't focus so much necessarily on, on being there on the spot, um, but more so make it possible for people to contribute in a decentralized way. Um, we also wanted to achieve a tangible outcome as this is sometimes you know, helpful in, in reaching people and especially in a, in a forum like the Internet Governance Forum, um, youth messages and youth positions are something that then can be spread and uh, referred to throughout the whole week. Um, our next goal was to network youth initiatives. We are aware that there is a lot of um, things happening all over the world, uh, amazing initiatives and projects by young people, for young people in internet governance, and we also want to highlight their activities. And overall, as we are all here now, <laughs> we also wanted to make young people just more visible at the IGF and highlight their, their expertise and what they bring to the table by offering opportunities to engage and offering opportunities to also um, speak up here in the forum. So what we started doing um, in late summer was that we gathered over 100 people from all world regions, all kinds of different backgrounds, 
in a decentralized webinar phase, which meant that um, each week or so, over the past weeks, we had um, a webinar focusing on different topics. We chose the three main themes of this year's IGF and then also added the topic of public discourse and disinformation and because this, this makes a lot of sense to do youth participation in internet governance especially and how to engage and what best practices we see. Um, so in every webinar we had a chunk, a part of our participants present, they interacted with our experts and came up with, um, with statements, with general uh, conclusions out of every webinar. And this output of the webinar was also the basis for what we did yesterday in the on-site Youth IGF Summit, um, which also had over 100 people um, present. We were in Berlin Mitte, the Spreepalli, and had a lot of space to figure out how to go from the, uh, the output of the webinars to more concise and concrete positions and messages that we wanted to um, bring to the IGF. Um, this went very well, and now I'm very happy that I that we are able to present to you 11 positions. Um, I will not be the one presenting them to you, but rather those who drafted them and who have been very intensely involved in drafting them. And after we are done with this, we would love to hear your feedback, get your ideas in, and elaborate on how we can spread them throughout the IGF. Um, if you take pictures of the messages, please note that they shouldn't be publicized, or we, we ask you to not publicize them until later today. Um, because, yeah, this is at this point exclusive content. You will see them on our website later and also on our social media channels. All right, I now ask um, the group re representative uh, from the group of youth participation to briefly read out and explain their message. So, uh, this is the message of uh, youth participation in internet governance. Young people face various barriers to participation. It is the responsibility of multi-stakeholder decision makers to overcome these barriers and involve diverse, including underrepresented young people, in a meaningful and measurable way in all internet governance processes. Uh, while coming up with this message, we had very interesting discussions uh, on the barriers faced when it comes to youth participation in internet governance, but we couldn't include them all in one message. And we believe this is an important message because we see that young people aren't being represented or integrated in a meaningful way uh, in internet governance processes and the platforms. This is why we want to encourage you here to open this discussion among yourselves and all the uh, stakeholders at this IGF, because if you want to make progress, it can only happen with the contribution of all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Uh, the next group was the one on digital education. So we'll ask the representative of this group to now unmute themselves. Thank you. So um, following a lively discussion that we had, our team had, we arrived at a following message that we think concerns the basic, the core issue standing in the heart of digital education. We think that the stakeholders must strive to incorporate universal ethical principles and standards and develop general competences framework in digital education. By underlining these crucial aspects, we believe um, very important positive contributions can be made to the enhancement of the quality of digital skills worldwide. Thank you. Thank you, Georgi. The next one is on child protection, <laughs> but now the presentation is lost, so I don't know. Yes, thank you, here it is. Go ahead. Good morning. Our message is, child protection online is a priority for us all. We need a universal approach. 
Collaboration between all stakeholders is crucial for designing effective policies by involving parents, healthcare, and education professionals, as well as children themselves. And also, as young leaders connected by the Youth IGF Summit, we have a mission to promote a safer environment in the internet for every child in the world. And I'm here to tell you we already started. From being volunteers along with NGOs to conducting researching projects in academia, the young leaders here are committed and we want to invite all of you to being mentors, partners and to join us in a world movement for an open and safer internet for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Um, whoever has the phone on loud, please. <laughs> you did the next group uh, is the one on net neutrality. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Deborah, and I'm really honored to present here what has been the message coming out from the work or working group. And actually, I'm here with Leonard, so I'm going to read the message. Uh, and our group uh, discussed the issue of net neutrality and uh, the message that came out from our collective group was the following. So net neutrality and unrestricted internet access must be guaranteed in order to ensure digital inclusion. To achieve that, governments, companies and internet service providers must not control data flows nor prioritize services and must ensure transparency. What we found out in yesterday's discussion was that especially net neutrality is important to a free and open internet for youth as youth is a crucial group that uses academic services, non-commercial services, niche services on the internet, and we, wanna, we want to ensure that these services are treated equally to um, commercial services online. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next one is on cybersecurity strategy. Um, good morning. Um, in the cybersecurity group, we have um, the, the following message. We demand new dynamic cybersecurity strategies with multi-stakeholder approaches that include transparent, adaptive, and human-oriented policies since laws have direct impacts in our daily lives as technology evolves, policy, policies must too. We believe that cybersecurity needs a human rights perspective, respecting um, the privacy of individuals, also the freedom of expression and different human rights that could be violated with a, with a cybersecurity strategy or policy that don't take that into consideration. We also um, believe in the media and information literacy in order that people can understand why cybersecurity is important. And um, also, we think that it has to be adaptive or adaptable to national um, circumstances and to national contexts because um, all the communities and societies um, have different um, uh, contexts. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next one is the group on critical infrastructure. Hello everyone, uh, this is Rashi here. Um, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, we had a diverse group um, spanning different continents and first we sat down and outlined a definition on what we understand by critical infrastructures. Uh, we decided that these are public services that are not working. Uh, the sectors that are affected are not limited to energy, water, government, banking, economy, and telecommunication. Uh, we decided uh, to also identify the ongoing vulnerability and the management processes that can be or should be implemented. And the operator should also report the security incidents directly to the government uh, about the current overview rather than being very um, disclosed about it. So the statement that we have is, uh, dear governments, nobody wants their utility companies to get hacked. Critical infrastructure that affects lives need to be protected. Let's have a proactive approach of audits and national strategies alongside proper disclosure of vulnerabilities. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next one is the group working on AI. 
Good morning, everyone. So our statement goes like this. Human intervention must guide AI-driven decision-making to ensure explainability, inclusivity, privacy, accountability, and the right to appeal. It shall occur whenever the decision render had disrupted personal consequences, especially for vulnerable groups such as the youth. So in the Wonken Group on Human Intervention on AI, we came to the realization that these principles, explainability, inclusivity, privacy, accountability, and the right to appeal, cannot be preached per se of automated systems, regardless of their level of perfection. Therefore, human intervention becomes essential not only in the technical preparation process, for instance, by correcting biases in the training data sets, but mostly to give an explanation of the result rendered by the artificial intelligence that is contextualized in accordance with qualitative, ethical, legal, and normative considerations. A reference to disruptive personal consequences was a way for us to evoke broadly fundamental rights, such as access to healthcare or to due judicial process, and to highlight how, with systems that often cannot even be reverse engineered, to have this human uh, responsible person should be the way to ensure that these rights are not jeopardized by automation. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next working group was working on facial recognition. Buenos dias, good morning everyone. Our message is no facial recognition without transparency and accountability. Risks and biases exist and they need to be known. In context, we got to this point because we consider that governments should not use face recognition at all, although we know it's almost impossible for them to avoid the usage of this technology. So we are asking for a better regulation in those countries that have approved data protection laws and the creation of it in those countries that do not have it. Literacy of the population in this technology is needed immediately to approach this urgent problematic. Youth represents the majority number of users, and in the future, we are, gonna be, we are going to be in charge of public policies. So when we, are speak, we, we, we ask for governments to listen to us today. Thank you very much. The next group was working on platform regulation. Please go ahead. Hello everyone, our message is platform regulation is necessary, but in a Goldilocks approach that balances human rights and innovation. Regardless of the platform's purpose, their governance should be multi-stakeholder, inclusive, transparent, and culturally sensitive. Everyone deserves a place at the table. Our idea, it came from the fact that so much of today's internet content is, uh, is provided by platforms. It is created by third parties and hosted, accessed, transmitted, and indexed by platforms. Because of this and how it impacts young people, we, that's why we decided this on this very important topic. On the part of the Goldilocks approach, it is about finding the right balance between not too much regulation which, st which stifles innovation and not too little which leaves human rights at risk. And on the topic of governance, it is about making it transparent and multi-stakeholder so we can all have a say on algorithms and how they impact our society. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next group was working on transparency. Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Um, after fruitful discussions on the transparency of the digital world, uh, we formed and agreed upon the following claim. Companies should be transparent on their algorithms, data, content, rules, and decision-making to uphold trust and responsibility. Governments should play a role in enforcement with independent bodies. Users and independent researchers should have easy access to the necessary data. Why is this important to the youth? Without transparency and information on how digital decisions have been made, the youth is not able to learn about the digital environment and will not be able to live self-determined in it. A result of a transparent behavior in the internet would be a trusted relationship between the youth and the digital world. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, as far as I know, the last message is on um, disinformation, misinformation. Go ahead. 
Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the, uh, the opportunity of being here and sharing about this issue with you. Disinformation is an issue that has been affecting us globally, having devastating consequences for our political systems, especially to democracies. And it affects young people distinctively. As digital natives and heavy users of social media, youth is in constant contact with disinformation. As this group is still forming their opinions, ideas, and convictions, it can be easily manipulated by ill-advised actors spreading this type of misleading content online. One of the most used strategies for that so far is micro-targeting, carried out by the collection of users' data and their categorization, allowing the distribution of political advertising for specific results, which has shown to be a successful approach to determining positions and votes in elections. Considering the complexity of this phenomenon, it is not possible to have a one-size-fits-all solution, meaning all stakeholders involved in the process should take action. Platforms or intermediaries are one of these actors, and we, as young people, urge them to act. In that sense, we demand platforms to instate multi-stakeholder councils to dismiss illeg illegitimate data points from micro-targeting used for political advertising to diminish the dangers of disinformation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you have now heard the 11 positions that came out of yesterday. There will, those people who presented and those who formed the groups will be present throughout the Internet Governance Forum and will, um, you will be able to interact with them. For example, every day from 1 to 2 p.m. we are going to have lunch talks. Uh, you have seen the, the food court or maybe you have been there already, there is a sustainability corner dealing with sustainable development goals, but also um, youth has a lot of, gains a lot of visibility there. So whenever you want to come up and talk more and more deeply about those um, positions that you just heard, this is an opportunity. Also today, there is a Twitter activity happening dealing with youth participation, but also how to give visibility to, um, to those youth messages as well, and my, my colleague Lilian will briefly explain you how that's going to go. Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you again. I'm Lilian from the German Informatics Society, and today at 12 o'clock we will be starting a Twitter initiative with other civil society organization, organizations, among others Wikimedia Germany, and Better Place Lab with the IGF Navigator. And uh, with our partners, we are starting Twitter interviews about youth participation. So we will be tweeting at high profile or less high profile attendants today. Some of them know already and have agreed to take part. And we will be asking them three questions about youth, part youth participation and internet governance. And it's really important that all of you guys get involved as well to spread the messages, to spread the questions, to retweet them, and maybe get involved with your organization so we can make sure that we really spread our demands and our questions to all these people and the organizations. If you have more questions about this, please feel free to contact me. And um, yeah, have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Lillian. And now we all have the opportunity, you have the opportunity to ask questions, give feedback. We have microphones here for those of you who don't sit close to one. You can be handed a microphone. And um, if you don't have any questions, I will ask you questions. So. <laughs> Raise your hand if you want to contribute. All right, um, discussions happening there. <laughs> um, all right, so according to the people in the room, so both those who have already worked on, on what we've just seen, but also those who have heard it for the first time, 
what do you think is the most important topic and what is the most important strategy to make these topics heard for young people here at the IGF? I would love to hear your input. I see a lot of people with a lot of experience in this space. And No? <laughs> Go ahead. So this is my second year at, at IGF, and I remember in Paris in 2018, there was a lot of debate about tangible outputs and the importance of having something that can be clearly showcased and given visibility to. And I was pleased to see that in, in the presentation that we just introduced, there was an, a note or a phrase about, we want to produce tangible outputs from the youth IGF caucus. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the first year that the youth is introduced as a stakeholder on its own terms, right? As a, as a known... I mean, that is an ongoing discussion. If youth is a stakeholder in, as a group, um, they are definitely in IGF Germany. So this has had a tradition here at the, in the National Internet Governance Forum to have them represented, to have young people represented in the steering committee and um, in, the, in the organization. Um, this is also the tradition that we built on in trying to make this a point at the IGF itself to um, introduce young people as a stakeholder, maybe not an official one as um, by the internet governance definition, but especially as a group that needs to be seen and heard. Well, whether official or not, if we can offer that type of tangible, clear outcomes, I feel that's the best way to, to make an impact. Because other people is what they want to collect. Um, I know that businesses look for this kind of clear key messages, uh, other participants who may come here as researchers or even just individual people, they are looking for the kind of clear message rather than some foggy interaction. So probably this tangible output is, is a good way to move forward. Thank you, Maria. And actually, you have a few representatives of the IGF Germany here as well, um, in the from the youth department of, of the IGF Germany. And um, maybe they can quickly recall how it, how it is structured here in Germany and what they are trying to do with being present in the steering committee and being present with what happens. So they're sitting right across from you. Maybe, Katrin, you want to go ahead? Um, I can give it a try. Um, yeah, it's really great to um, have the whole steering committee and all the people working on IGF in Germany. They're really into, um, yeah, giving us a chance to say what uh, we want and they're really including us in all um, important discussions. So it's, um, it's a really great opportunity and when we have um, meetings from the steering committee, for example, they're really into give us a voice and they often including um, youth perspectives. So it's not that we have to push to say something. They're really like, What's, what do you want to say, please? Um, uh, what, what can we do better and that stuff. So it's really, um, it's really amazing. And we basically did the same thing we did now that we had a pre-event for before the German um, IGF with only young people. And we basically made the same thing we did here and to create some um, messages um, and yeah, it was um, quite a quite a good thing. And I th I think because we had uh, some good messages, and um, people on the German IGF were really great listening to us. Thank you, Katrin. And actually, the feedback that we got after the IGF Germany was that youth was too visible, and that is, I mean, that was one feedback. Most of it was more positive, but. Um, this is what I want to achieve here as well at the IGF with all those brilliant young people present, not only those who have participated in the summit, but all others as well. And I see now that there is contribution from the floor. Uh, hello, good morning. It's Umar Khan from Pakistan. Uh, actually, one group was uh, um, talking about the protection and um, transparency. So we need to protect and make the internet safe and so uh, every social site shall have the policy to make 
access every person for one account. You know that there is no policy for any person. Any can, anyone can make a fake account on the Facebook, on the Twitter, on other social sites. So uh, there shall be a policy for it that it should be regulated uh, on the national identity card or other things. Uh, it uh, should be work only for the fingerprint. A person can make only one account so it will be more transparent because uh, if I'm using Facebook with my name, I can create uh, a different account, a fake account with another Gmail, with a phone number. So it's the right uh, time to, we should have to take a right decision at this time and we have to make Facebook safe and positive. Thank you so much. I mean, this is definitely a controversial thing. <laughs> I've seen now a hand raised, please go ahead. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Fernando, I'm from Brazil. And uh, my question is, uh, there's a lot in the presentations, there were a lot references with, of multi-stakeholder uh, caucuses and the, the way that this is organized inside the IGF. I would like to ask all of you, what, what's your opinion on the effectivity of multi-stakeholder uh, caucus and the way that this uh, has actual effect on such topics as digital misinformation. Maybe um, I could just chime in. Um, as we were discussing a lot about this on the disinformation, misinformation group yesterday. So that's why um, our message is not directed to a multi-stakeholder um, that sometimes might feel too abstract and not actually grab, uh, grapple with the issue at hand. Uh, we are directing the message to platforms, but they are the ones who should have a multi-stakeholder approach to the issue because it's not going to be solved by the platforms themselves alone or by citizens or by governments or by academia or civil society organizations. We actually need input from all of those stakeholders, but at this moment, we believe that platforms uh, should be taken accountable for, for the issue more than they have been. Thank you, I saw a few hands raised. I would one from the floor, then Jen, I wanted to say something. No? Okay, but then you. Thank you for the opportunity, moderator. Um, good morning to everyone. My name is Agita. I'm from Youth IGF Movement with my colleagues in here, founded by Tech International, and we are currently existed in uh, over 36 countries. Um, I think it's very interesting to see the outcomes of the Youth IGF Summit and um, it is also very good for us to know each of the outcomes that's come up from the Youth IGF Summit. More importantly, I would like to know um, the outcomes and probably the following up projects afterwards. As we know that there is the um, disinformation um, in terms of the political as uh, the colleague from there is actually already mentioned as well. What would be the youth um, following up project in terms of collaborating with the stakeholders or the private sectors or the government to basically tackling all the issues. Um, I think that's probably something that I would like to hear more. And obviously we are from the Youth IGF movement, we're pretty much very happy to collaborate together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before I give the floor to you, Gustavo, I would like to see if there's someone, yeah, who wants to react to that? Uh, hi, I'm Elliot, uh, ISOC IGF Youth Ambassador from Australia. Um, I think that's 100% true. I think it's important that all the different stakeholders are heard in the Youth IGF. I think a lot of the people who are attending yesterday are from these sorts of diverse stakeholders, like. Uh, a lot of people from academia, a lot of people from civil society, um, I myself am like kind of half public private sector as well. So I think in that sense, just passively, we will get diversity in stakeholders and everybody will take back um, what we learn and the statements and everything. So I think we'll get stakeholder exposure in that way as well, um, in a more passive manner. Thank you, Elliot. Um, Gustavo? 
Hello. Um, I didn't introduce myself before. I'm Gustavo from Brazil. And on the topic of platform or multi-stakeholder approach to platforms, there was this case last year, uh, this year actually. It was the Christchurch call. It was an event called by the French and New Zealand government. And it brought together governments and business sector in Paris, where they discussed um, the aftermath of the Christchurch shooting in New Zealand. One of the criticisms for this event was that it was not multi-stakeholder. Even in its letter, the final output document, it, it had provisions for governments and businesses, just governments and just businesses. So I think one of the, one of the lessons we, we got from this, from the Youth Summit, is to reinforce this multi-stakeholder approach to platform discussions. So it's not only about governments and businesses, it's about academia, civil society, and also the youth as, as representatives. That is one of my points. One of the second points, it was about the follow-up. So there are two, two issues I'd like to raise. First is uh, a lot of this discussion already, this discussion came as a follow-up to many projects we were doing individually and in our organizations. So, for example, um, I'm working, I'm helping a senator with, uh, with multiple projects on AI regulation, and that's going to continue. So I'm, I'm sure many of our youths here are also in similar situations. I would also raise the fact that of the 11 out outcomes we had, um, one was about facial recognition, one about AI, and three touched on platforms. So I think this can be seen as a tendency in and of itself so this year, we have three tracks for the IGF. Digital inclusion, security, safety, stability, and resilience, and data governance. So this may be a new tendency for the next year. Platforms and AI, that's what I had to say. Do we have um, the, f okay. Yeah. Uh, first, thank you for this opportunity. I'm Elnur from Azerbaijan. I'm one of the youth ambassadors. Um, I was thinking about how to bring this message to the IGF forum as we are not the direct uh, multi-stakeholder just for now. Uh, I think um, I, I can just give a brief introduction about my previous experience in the United Nations Universal Periodic Review uh, pre-sessions where the, even the non-governmental organizations are not, the, uh, are not allowed to uh, take part in the main sessions of the UPR. Uh, but uh, there, as a youth, we were involved in the NGO, NGOs and we were allowed to make a direct meetings with the governments who had the voice in the main meetings, uh, main sessions of the UPR. I think, uh, I, I'm not sure if the, uh, Internet Society can arrange such meetings, but it is, I think, very important to bring our particular message to the to particular government representatives as small groups, uh, because some messages are uh, relevant to particular countries because of their uh, expertise, like facial recognition. Not all countries now applying this uh, procedure, but we can directly meet the representatives of the uh, governments. Uh, to bring our message. I, I'm not saying that it's going to have a direct effect, but it's, an, uh, it's a way to bring the youth's uh, voice to the government's attention uh, just at the first uh, stage. Then I'm, I'm really hoping that in the next years, um, the youth will be like directly attending the IGF as a uh, multi-stakeholder, as a stakeholder. So thank you very much. It was a great effort, guys. Yeah. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. I guess we all agree that um, talking to decision makers and being involved in policy processes should become more normal throughout. Uh, we have one more. Hi, um, so my name is uh, Wakas. I'm from the Internet Society uh, Islamabad chapter. I actually kind of stole my question from my friend from Azerbaijan because it was on the same lines. Uh, we have so many uh, young uh, representatives from the uh, different uh, countries and different backgrounds. 
and this goes out to the house as well. Has you, have you ever, during your study, in the various study groups that you were doing, encountered an example where youth was identified as a stakeholder, as a, spe a specific sta sp stakeholder in the policy development process related to internet? Is there any example in the house that we can quote? Uh, and, and I want to know this because I want to take back to my government um, in Pakistan and give them an example. So if we have an example, that would be uh, great to know. Um, hi, my name is Emilia from the Advisory Council on Youth of the Council of Europe. Um, the Council of Europe has been pioneering co-management structure uh, within their, um, yeah, within their structure of, of, of the Council of Europe for nearly 50 years. So this is something that is not new. Youth has been recognized in the uh, Council of Europe as a stakeholder, which means that we, um, when it comes to youth, the Council of Europe decides on all decisions together with a youth advisory body, which myself and Dominic, who is sitting next to you, are part of. So if you're interested in more about that, we will be uh, very glad to, uh, to share our good practices. But I can really assure you that it has been working for nearly 50 years. We do decide on all policies that uh, refer to youth within the Council of Europe, um, and this is something that we can only recommend. Thank you, Emilia. There was another hand by Maria. Very briefly, because I understand the criticism to the multi-stakeholder buzzword. Uh, there will be a session um, organized by ISOC later on today, starting at half past uh, 1 p.m., so 13.35, as we say in French. And one of the topics that I've been fortunate enough to coordinate is challenges to the multi-stakeholder model and to what extent it rents fruitful objectives. Uh, it's a very participative, inclusive, so it's not gonna be me telling the little I know, but it's going to be people discussing about it. So in case you were particularly interested in giving a critical assessment, it's going to be in the next one. This is ID, so IC, of course, for everyone who wants to participate. Yes, hello guys, I am Karsan from Tanzania, and uh, what I would like to say is that the 11 messages are truly connected and I think there should not be a two-way fold when it comes to truth, starting with misinformation. We should establish some sort of uh, fact-based caucus that can help us uh, reach how we disseminate the facts because now we see facts and truth is being distorted for the interest-based uh, uh, people and stakeholders that when it comes to regulations, we might have a voice, like we youth might be here, might present our stuff, but in the end, when it goes to the high level, it's not represented because everybody has an interest and they have the power. You know, they have the power because they are connected, so it's important so, for us to officiate our message so that we can consolidate our voices as young people, so we can have a way to counter, uh, you know, counteract uh, such people who tend to go against the things that we come through here. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And uh, first of all, thank you, everyone here today, for all your hard work that you've done yesterday. They were very, very interesting points, and I look forward to seeing this uh, being raised throughout the entire week and on the discussions by yourself, but also everybody else attending. My name is Nadia Chechia. I am the uh, representative for the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, which is a dynamic coalition of the UN Internet Governance Forum here. I just wanted to comment on the, the question of multi-stakeholder um, environments. This has been a topic that was, it's, it's really central to uh, YSIG because it's uh, basically our presence here um, as, as stakeholders, our participation, uh, as a dynamic coalition that uh, our entire existence is based on this discussion. And over the years, we have decided that as um, in our discussions that when we want to have youth present, uh, whether that's an individual stakeholder, but also as part of um, other stakeholder groups such as the government and academics. So one of the things that YSIC promotes every year for the uh, IGF is that we collect youth experts lists. So um, if you haven't seen them before, if you're a session organizer, we uh, rally young people who are experts in their uh, fields, who know things uh, about what's happening on the ground and can comment on it. Um, we publish a list, but we also contact session organizers that are relating uh, topics to youth issues and we promote uh, these are the best uh, speakers that we have available that are talking on your topic please consider them so if you're not on our list please reach out to us so that we can add you to this list and we hope that perhaps next year for uh, IGF 2020 that we can also ensure that you are being uh, recognized to be on uh, panels um, to promote 
your uh, thoughts and ideas um, relating to all these different topics. Thank you very much. And I also very warmly invite all of you to join the Y6 session on Friday, is that right? Yeah. Um, I was notified that way down to my right there. Yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, good morning to everybody. My name is Julia Morinitz. I'm, um, I'm representative of Tech International. As you know, Tech International coordinates the Youth IGF movement, which has been already uh, kindly presented by, uh, by our great Agita from Indonesia. As you know, we have 35 uh, countries with us and doing, um, and you know, um, promoting internet governance and DNS discussions at the national local level. So um, just two quick points, actually. I think the very important point here, and I see, you know, the young people um, who came from different countries, is the coordination and the better cooperation and how we can strengthen as well the cooperation between different youth initiatives. So if I think we are all together, we can make a more powerful and um, uh, you know, bring more powerful message to the leaders. Uh, this would be my first point. And the second point would be, um, you. Uh, someone said something about how we can bring the message to the leaders. So we are organizing actually an open forum with the leaders, with the members of the European uh, Parliament on Thursday. Um, so you are very welcome all to come and actually to discuss and actually to bring the message to the leaders uh, and all the statements on Thursday from three to four. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. We will be present um, in that session as well. I would have to leave soon. I would now hand over to my colleague Lilian. Um, there was one more hand. Maybe we can take you. But then after we move on to the next part of our session, which is an opportunity for all of you who coordinate youth initiatives to briefly explain um, what your plans are for the next week, for the next year, and what you're up to. Thank you, Elizabeth. I am Sinjanaya Cantanhede from Brazil. And commenting towards what you say in the difficulties that we have in coordinating different movements when it comes to engaging youth, something that is really important is that in the Youth IGF initiative in the website, we have been trying to coordinate and register some of the youth movements that we have. As well as he representing the leaders, we have a lot of different stakeholders, initiatives from NGOs to academia and things like that. And most Mostly, I believe that the cooperation is so important, also regional, because we have been discussing in the Child Online Protection Group that we must have a universal approach, but also we must have the empowerment in the regional discussions, because we have different challenges, depends on where you live, depends on what's the situation of your country. For example, when it comes to child online protection, first of all, we have different age consent, which kind of changes a lot on how you understand who is a child and who is a teenager and how we must protect them. So I think that we all should coordinate a cooperation like this one and use this space to be more empowered and try to actually find a universal approach for having a best qualified outcomes. So thank you. Thank you very much for your input. Now I would like to turn to the activities and I already have a few people on my list and I would suggest that I invite them to speak first and after all it's open for all of you guys to also contribute to the discussion. First I have Mathilde from the Italian ISOC chapter. Would you like to come up front? Yes. Thank you. So um, I'm a spokesperson of the Italian Society. So the Italian Internet Society is really grateful to be here. In fact, it's the first time in the Internet Governance Forum history that a great delegation of young Italian activists, researchers, and experts from the Internet Society, Italy, and its youth observatory are participating at accredited representatives to this IGF. The Italian Internet Society acts on a national and international level. We act in order that Italian people have a voice in Internet meetings. We act as Italian experts could participate to it. And we also act in order that Italian people have as a opinion spread in those meetings. In an international level, we also want to collaborate with uh, different people from different kind of international groups. 
such as the, our participation here. We will be glad to know you and we will follow all the workshops of this IGF edition, especially the ones that are relevant for young people. So if you are interested in knowing us, we will be happy to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, Mathilde. And next I have uh, Nicolas from the Youth IGF movement on the list. Are you here? Hello, everybody. Nicolas Fiumarelli from Uruguay. I am ISOC Youth Ambassador this year. Uh, from my, in my case, we have a national initiative, the Youth IGF Uruguay, where we have been re uh, doing some courses for young students in my country, and we have shown the regional initiative. So I, in, as a recommendation, I recommend to, that the youth initiatives need to collaborate with each other. Uh, that is a, the best thing to do, and that is my recommendation. I am glad to be here with all of you. Thank you very much, Nicolas. And next, I have Angenia from Youth at SID. Are you here? <laughs> no? Okay, then um, I open the floor to anyone else who would like to participate or contribute. Is there anyone? Yes. Hello, everyone. This is Jenna from NetMission.Asia. I'm personally the coordinator of this NetMission Academy and also Hong Kong Youth IGF and also Asia Pacific Youth IGFs. So regarding the academy, we provide uh, online webinars series to youth from Asia Pacific. We try to give them capacity building trainings and then even after they graduate from the academy, we support them to attend the regional or even the global IGF. So this is like a process that we do. And talking about collaborations, and this is like a great opportunity that I really hope I can engage more uh, young experts from other regions so that we can have you guys on our webinars when we are giving out these trainings to our next generations in Asia Pacific and other other than this academy, personally, like being in charge and involved in this Asia Pacific Youth IGF for two years already. And it is like a process uh, for young people to get more involved in internet governance discourse. Because earlier this year, we held this event uh, in summer in Vladivostok in Russia. And young people actually, um, start to propose um, propose some more ideas other than just like having a like a show on the regional IGF they suggest they they should be on you know they should be required to be on every single sessions on this um, workshop sessions on the main conference and they even write youth statement that they submit to the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. So it's like a process where young people get more engaged. So I think it's essential for us to do our work to actually improve our program design and structure of the youth IGF because this uh, capacity building trainings are really important for us to actually build the capacity of our next generation. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a really important point. I have some more, uh, oh, a lot of raised hands now. First of all, I would like to give the word to you. Thank you. So my name is Suad Abidi. I'm from Algeria. I'm Youth IGF Ambassador. And um, so I'm very happy to be here. And um, I would like to t talk about the initiatives in Algeria. So in 2018, we uh, start an initiative called Youth IGF Movement with Yulia. She spoke later. And um, so we made two events per year. Uh, the first one was uh, Safer Internet Day. And it was a great initiative in my country to aware people more about the internet and how to get secure and how to make um, 
how to um, um, get secure on the internet and uh, a lot of other things like um, child protection and um, how to control cont how to control the content. Um, another one is. Um, uh, Cybersecurity Month in October, last October, and meanwhile I started Isaac Chapter Algeria. Uh, with I gathered 40 person in Algeria, and I collaborate with two um, local uh, enterprise to uh, aware people more about the internet. And I think what lags in Africa is um, this kind of initiatives and how to make more people um, uh, engaged and um, put them all together uh, under one discussion um, to give, uh, to make internet a better place. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now I have one uh, contribution from the floor there in the back. Hi, uh, my name is Valerie. I am from Ukraine. I'm the moderator of uh, Youth IJF UA. Uh, so I have, uh, I want uh, to say a little bit uh, about our initiative. Uh, you know, we just started our uh, youth uh, forums only uh, uh, last year. So today, uh, this year, we again have the uh, Youth IJF. And, uh, uh, you know, I was really excited because we have uh, got uh, two clear messages from our youth. Uh, first of all is, uh, I think that what we uh, heard already today about this is the general awareness of uh, the fact that youth can participate and must participate in uh, internet governance. And uh, you think that we have some issues by uh, how we can do it, uh, what means we should apply to uh, get youth more in uh, these processes. And I will be really glad to uh, if uh, everyone uh, um, uh, share the, your experience and the second one I think the one of uh, um, the most important thing that we have today is inclusion uh, for example um, uh, some representatives from uh, uh, one school uh, they uh, just uh, have an investigation over the uh, website governmental website and it appears that not all of them are are um, suitable for people, for example, with some issues with vision. So uh, they uh, just uh, um, created and designed their own site, uh, which led all the uh, necessary um, and necessary um, things enable to uh, give this possibility for people, for all people to uh, be involved in this. So uh, thank you again very much for yesterday's uh, uh, discussion. It was really, really productive and uh, good luck for everyone. Thank you very much, Valerie. And I have a lot of raised hands here, so I start with you in the middle. Thank you. Uh, my name is Juliana. I'm a member of the Youth Observatory. And every year we organize an event that we call Youth at Lack of Jeff, which is basically a prep event before the Latin American Caribbean uh, meeting that happens every year in a different country. So what we do is we brief young people on some of the discussions that we will have at the actual forum and we offer fellowships for them to attend. This event is already in its fourth edition now, and we're organizing it in Africa for the first time this year. It happened uh, earlier in 2019, the first edition of the African edition of this event, and we actually want to expand it to other places, so in case you're interested, uh, let me know. Thank you very much, Juliana. And I have one more contribution from the floor. Um, hi, uh, my name is Tungili, and I'm from South Korea for the recording. And uh, last July in South Korea, we organized the first youth session at the Korea Internet Governance Forum. Even though the Korea is one of the leading country for the technologies, however, the participation to organize and gathering the the opinion about the internet governance for the youth is not that, we are not that perfect. That's why uh, based on the, the collecting 
uh, the focus topics we found today, and I'm going to share it with the Korean youth in the locally, locally. And I would like to contribute how can we make the real action plan, how to bring the, the technology in the real world with the, the other people, not only the other people, and but also the, the local students in South Korea as well. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you very much. And next, I have a contribution right there. Okay. Thank you. I am Sinji from Brazil, and I would like to present the EU Seed Initiative that is coordinated by the SaferNet NGO. In this initiative, we have 20 young leaders working in five regions of Brazil towards practicals for a safer internet. But the main thing to speak about it is that we are allied with the Safer Internet Day that in 2020 is going to happen February 11. So if anyone would like to submit a proposal by the website and start a volunteer initiative to promote activities in Safer Internet, I could be valuable to help you out with some outcomes and also some material that we have towards that. So thank you. Thank you very much. And next, I'll give the word to you. Hi, I'm Shadrach from Ghana. And I'm a steering committee member for the Ghana Youth IGF, which um, took place on 10th July this year, which was the maiden edition. So um, during our IGF, we try to gather uh, people, youth from local communities and also from um, institutions like schools and a few. So um, after our IGF, we're able to come out with some objectives, which is to um, create more opportunity for youth to engage in internet governance issues. I'm um, coming from a country where IGF is really low, awareness is low. We are trying to um, create a grassroots opp opportunities for people to really get to understand some of these um, internet governance issues and also try to partner with um, institutions like um, the telcos and other bodies and also the government to um, support us with um, resources in organizing frequent um, internet governance uh, forums in our country. So um, that's the little uh, we did this year at the ISOC Ghana chapter. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next, I have a contribution to my right. Uh, thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Diana from the Albanian Youth IGF. We plan to host the first Albanian Youth IGF uh, next year. Earlier this year, we closed the call for inputs, uh, where we received 154 responses, and participants had the opportunity to uh, rate uh, each uh, one of the themes on the importance that they have uh, for Albania. And based on uh, those uh, inputs, we came up with a draft uh, agenda, which includes an introduction to internet governance. The main session would be uh, on rethinking governance, safety, and media from a youth perspective. Uh, the third session will be focused on the future of jobs, and the last session will be a session uh, with uh, good uh, examples from the Albanian youth community on how they are using the internet to empower, uh, to empower their uh, communities. And what we hope to do the, uh, next year is to gather not only youth, but um, youth together with uh, all the stakeholders so they can discuss together uh, on this issue so it, wouldn't, it won't be just youth. Uh, isolated and talking to uh, each other and uh, inspired by what we saw here at the Youth IGF Summit. We hope that uh, we can come up with youth messages uh, as an outcome that we can publish uh, online. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's really good to hear about all these meaningful youth initiatives. Next, I have you, and then afterwards, I'll give the word to you far right, and then I'll get back to you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am Paola Galvez. I am an Internet Society IGF Youth Ambassador. 
And I would like just to briefly comment that um, next week in Peru, there will be the first youth IGF. And I am very glad because we already have the confirmation of civil society, academics, and private sector participation. So since this is my first time in an IGF, I am uh, really happy because I will bring all the knowledge that I will learn here um, to this youth IGF. And I hope that more people get engaged and more youth people uh, from Peru will attend here uh, the next IGF. So if there is a, a Peruvian attendee here, I will be more than glad to share information of the youth IGF. Thank you very much. And now, all the way in the back, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Rashi here from India. I just wanted to comment a little about the Indian context. We just ended uh, with the India Internet Week uh, last uh, in, the, in the second week of November. Uh, we also had our second youth IGF. Uh, so we had, and we also have uh, the India School of Internet Governance, which has been run by four or five in Internet Society chapters. Uh, one, one of the concerns that we do have is that we don't have a national IGF in India yet, although uh, there are a lot of pressing internet governance issues. Uh, we don't have an Information Privacy Act. Uh, we also don't, uh, the multi-stakeholder approach is still fairly new to kind of comprehend. So um, I, I also have Atif here, who is an Internet a Society youth ambassador and we had a small session yesterday as to what are the frame uh, frameworks and guidelines and best practices that we can take back to our home country and uh, we would like to just open the floor uh, and if you could also reach out to us and tell us what are the things that we can do in order to work towards uh, getting a national IGF put together so please uh, reach out to us we are here throughout the week uh, thank you thank you Rashi and now I give the word to Elliot Hi, I'm Elliot from Australia, uh, Internet Society IGF Youth Ambassador. Um, I'm part of a uh, group of youth in, in the Asia Pacific region, Youth for IG, look it up, youth for, ID, youth for IG Asia. You can all join. We have a WhatsApp group, we have a Slack chat. Um, and basically what we do is it's mainly a networking sort of group. So we all get to know each other and we share opportunities amongst each other. Um, part of what we are trying to achieve, one of our main goals, is trying to increase the number of youth involved in the Asia-Pacific region in internet governance. Um, it's one of the fastest growing regions with internet users, um, and we believe that it should be, this should be reflected in internet governance. So what we mainly do, we have monthly calls where we discuss various initiatives we're running. We have a mentorship group. Um, we're going to be running a capacity building sessions next year. Um, and this is all really to get people involved make sure they stay involved in internet governance. So youth4rg.asia, look it up, um, join our groups and everything. Thanks. Thank you, Elliot. And I thought I would just stand up to see everyone. Now I have a contribution from the floor. Uh, hi, all. Uh, this is Jose Fisaja. I come from Chat. I'm the general coordinator of uh, Youth IGF Chat. Uh, this youth initiative is created since 2016, and this past August we had our uh, fourth edition of uh, Youth IGF. Uh, we talk about many uh, uh, topics, but the main topic that we are still working on it is uh, the lack of access to internet. Because I come from uh, a country where we every time talk about uh, lack of access to internet and uh, young people like uh, they don't have the right to use internet uh, freely and some of them they still don't know and they understand the meaning of uh, like internet so we are trying to teach them how to use internet how what's uh, like uh, the, are the benefits of internet so and this is my second time to uh, attend uh, IGF and I'm very uh, happy to meet the uh, young people who are coming from different uh, uh, countries with different background and skills. So thank you. Thank you very much. And now we have one more contribution from the floor. Hello, everyone. Um, I am an year 10 student from Hong Kong. And this is my first time to attend IGF. Nice to meet you all. Um, 
I think that all of you may heard about the current news in Hong Kong, and it is undeniable that the acceptance of listening to the opinions from the youngsters. Um, I've, um, as a Hong Kongers and as a Hong Kong teenager especially, um, it is really heartbreaking that our government is not really listening to the opinions from the youth. I think that the international government or the international level can open the, a wider capacity to the acceptance of young young opinions and um, of with cooperation between the countries. I believe that a little difficulty is there to conceive a dynamic but beautiful route. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. That's a really important point, and thank you for being here. Next, I have one contribution from the plenary. Okay, thank you. Uh, again, I'm Deborah, uh, and uh, I'm from Italy, but I'm here with a delegation from the Youth Department of the Council of Europe, and I I'm a trainer for human, for human rights education. I'm an, an activist for um, against hate speech uh, for youth participation as well. And uh, I actually got kind of a question for the plenary because you know it's so empowering and so nice to hear all these um, like great and amazing initiatives made by young people for empowerment and for including people, uh, young people, in the decision-making processes. And more than once we have been hearing how it's important to have youth as, the, as a stakeholder, not just because it's the right thing to do, because of course we are internet users and we are affected by the decisions that are made on internet governance, but you know, more and more often we get the chance to actually see youth as experts that can really contribute to give creative solutions to what are problems that sometimes old mindsets are not really able to solve. So youth can be a resource, it's not just you know, the right stakeholder to have, but it's actually kind of a, uh, a great resource and a, a solution to many problems. So my question would be, then why are we still thinking and talking about including youth as a stakeholder, as a process that doesn't seem to be like close to happen? I mean, why do you think, and I'm also asking to the people in the plenary who are not identifying as youth, why do you think there is still so much resistance in including really youth in decision-making processes and as a stakeholder? What's the reason if, you know, we can be so valuable, so great experts is a you know it's an honest question i i have some answers to that but i'm really curious to hear other feedback so thank you that's a really good question are there any immediate reactions to this or no answers we have one here okay my name is joshua from um nigeria i represent the west african youth igf so over the over the past, uh, Veronica Veronica spoke about what the youth of Eritrea has been doing over the past few months. We've been trying to see how we can get youth actively involved in internet governance issues, right? And I think to me, Deborah, this is one of the process to get the youth actively involved. So we we have had the summit. We have had different. Uh, for once this year, I think we had the highest numbers of um, youth IGFs, which has never happened before, which is progress for me. Uh, the next step is, which is something I said yesterday, is what happens after now. So we all go back to our different communities, we all go back to our different regions. What are those impacts you make from your local uh, steering committees, from your local uh, MAG committees? What are those, have you started pushing to have the youth involved from the MAG in your own local regions, your own local uh, countries? Because we need to make those changes from that part. And then you, when you're able to make those changes from your local committees, it's now easy when everybody comes and say, oh, we all now want to come together and push to the United Nations that we want to have a youth representative, which I think they have currently, because some, some members on the MAC currently, uh, I know of Afi, I know of, uh, I know of um, Afi and the other lady from Gambia who are currently on the MAG as youth members, as youth, sorry. Uh, so I feel the, the change we need to be talking about now is how do we as youth, after we are here, what are those changes we take from here to our different locations to actually impact on our nations so that when we come back here next year, 
what we'll be talking about will be how do we move forward from what we have done from our local regions. I don't know if that helps a little bit. But the first step is coming here. And the first next step is going back home and making sure you have a standard UDIGF. Thank you very much. I have one contribution there in the back. <clears throat> Hi. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Louis from Malaysia. I just wanted to make sure that the Southeast Asia also uh, is recognized here, that Malaysia just had its first ever youth um, IGF earlier this month, and we are actually in the process of forming a Malaysia national IGF. But before we even had the national IGF, we actually had the youth IGF first. This shows that the youth are capable of leading and uh, forming their own IGF. Uh, that's one. My second message is um, maybe we can consider that these core messages, 11 messages that we formed and bringing today, that we can break into groups and continue uh, acting on and advocate uh, uh, moving those messages, for example, moving particularly for platform regulations, so those who are particularly interested in that message can come together and strategize and see how we can amplify the message so that we can make sure that is uh, that message is put across. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any more answers to the question that she just posed before? Yes, first you. Yes. Yes, Nicolas Fiumarelli from Utah ICF Uruguay again. Yes, I believe all the work uh, done, we are hearing here, is very valuable, and we need to continue training young people and including them in the decision making process. After all, they are the ones who use the internet the most. It is important to continue generating proliferation in different spaces when we return to local spaces. In the case of Utah ICF Uruguay, this year we established it different synergies at the level of high school, since these ages are the best for obtaining opinions and collecting them, since they are more exposed in their daily lives to new technologies. We also want to continue focusing on activities toward university students, for example, uh, specific careers such as networks, telecommunications, social sciences, and law, since several of the basic concepts taught in these careers must be deepened and matched with the current concepts and progress of the internet governance and internet principles. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm afraid to say we only have 10 minutes left, and I think I see five contributions at least. I would start with you right in the back. Um, you've, thank you. Was? I will be brief. Can you hear me? Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for the fruitful discussion. My name is Maria, and I am a, I am a Tech International USIGF Movement Ambassador from Ukraine. So I agree that it's not a question that you should be a stakeholder, because in Ukraine I see a great level of interest. For example, at our uh, USIGF, we can see almost, sometimes we can see almost the same uh, people participating as at our national IGF. And I also see this great interest also in all the events we conducted, uh, conducting, for example, the Cybersecurity Month and the Safe Internet Day events. But I believe that we will need more events and maybe more resources sources to meet this level of interest and to help people, as it was said before, uh, young people, as it was said before, to distill the clear messages and to bring those messages to the leaders. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, from the floor. Oh. <laughs> I forgot about this. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hello, my name is AJ. Um, I'm here from Turkey on behalf of Sabitat uh, Association. It's a nonprofit organization that I'm working with. Um, we do a lot of um, projects related to internet governance, and um, I'm willing to assist on um, um, what to do after attending here because we do a lot of projects um, involving youth. Um, so that's what we mainly working on. So if anyone wants to have any opinion or assistance regarding what to do after here, um, I'm willing to help and I'll be here for the full week. Thanks. Thank you very much. And now one more contribution from the floor, please. Thank you very much. Uh, Nadia from the Youth Coalition Internet Governance. Uh, before I would like to answer the comment, I would first like to congratulate all the people who said that they created their first IGF this year. Congratulations and I applaud you, well done for your hard work and uh, creating an opportunity for other people locally to participate on, in this forum and representing them here today now. 
And then I would also like to comment regarding uh, the multi-stakeholder uh, uh, question and, uh, and MAG involvement, that the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, we uh, attend the uh, MAG meetings, and you can also attend the MAG meetings online. And uh, if you are interested, MAG members do come and approach us to be involved in your local projects. They're happy to be uh, speakers in your um, local communities, and they are always open to answer any questions. So please do reach out to them, and if you are not sure to reach out to them yourselves, we're always happy to facilitate any discussion or debate uh, between you. And um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And next, I have Katrin. Um, yeah, Katrin from the German Youth IGF. Um, I already told you that we're really included in uh, Germany in the IGF, and the German Youth IGF, we currently try to not only have the one event per year in front of the German Youth IGF, but also kind of um, make an institution out of it throughout the year, and we're at the moment not quite sure how to manage that and how to get started with that, that we um, yeah, kind of institutionalize our whole uh, German Youth IGF, and I would be really happy if any of you has any idea how to do that, um, please just um, give me a note, and I would be really happy to um, yeah, have some advice on this. Thank you, Katrin. And since we have less than 10 minutes left, who else wants to make a contribution? There, there. Anyone here? I think I saw you. Okay, you too. And you. Okay, five contributions. Uh, we'll start with the floor. Hi, good day, everyone. I'm Abigail Antonar from the Philippines, and I am a Youth IGF ambassador. I'll be really quick. So it is a really a privilege to speak today, and like what other youth have bring on the table about the initiatives. Uh, in my country, there is small small awareness and IGF. And after this, I would I am envisioning into pioneering in increasing and improving the youth participation in my country because I believe that everyone must be put on the map in terms of internet governance. And I think that the messages of the youth from any part of the world is important as well. So it, I think this is the perfect avenue because there are a lot of amazing people here and leaders. And if you would like to collaborate for a pioneering an initiative, please do feel free to talk to me. Thank you. Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, it's great to see such a diverse uh, group of people from all around the world here. My name is Nick Shorey and I'm from the UK. And I'm here this week because I'm interested to learn more and find out what we collectively can do uh, to consider the issues of the impacts on the internet and internet technology on our global environment. Uh, as I'm sure everyone probably has a story in this room, uh, the, the climate is changing rapidly and uh, we all have a part to play. Uh, but it seems to me that internet and internet technology is not part of that conversation at the moment uh, to a significant enough extent. Uh, we've got a session on Wednesday at, I think it's midday, uh, with the IRPC, uh, Dynamic Coalition, to talk about this. But what I see here in this room is a bunch of young, enthusiastic people from all around the world, I'm sure with really amazing ideas and stories. So I would like to leverage your assistance, if you're interested, uh, to talk about this issue and identify ways that we can take this forward. So uh, please come and speak to me. Uh, tell me about your amazing WhatsApp groups and Slack channels and things like that. And hopefully, I can plug into you, and you can plug into me, and we can uh, leverage the, uh, the capability that's in this room. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Um, let's definitely leverage the capability in this room. First, Gustavo. Uh, about the question on youth as a stakeholder group, there are a few points that I personally find relevant. So yesterday in the summit, we had uh, the opportunity to hear from people from the Council of Europe on the youth experience here. In, here. It was very enlightening, um, but it also highlighted a few, a few differences between, let's, let's say, my reality and Latin American reality in Europe. Um, the first point is that um, there are the institutional implications. So I think uh, a lot of the 
hesitance in accepting youth as a stakeholder group is how will this new stakeholder group interact with our institution? How, how do our own institutional issues and problems, will, how will they interact with this new group of organized agents? So I think that's a point. Another is, uh, is the part of trust building. So in Europe, youth is more, more commonly defined as the young professional. So we were hearing yesterday that it is not rare for someone who's age 34, 30, 35 to identify as a young professional, which means that this person has had about 15 years of confidence building with institutions. Um, but in other countries, being a youth is a strict age requirement. So you age out. So the more you build confidence with institutions as an, as an expert, the less likely you are to be considered a youth. And while these institutions, they sometimes quite eagerly accept experts, they are more reluctant to accept a new stakeholder group. Thank you, Gustavo. We have four minutes left, so to everyone else who wants to say something, keep it sweet and short, please. I have one there in the back. Hello. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Elian Sejas. I'm from Argentina. Here I'm representing the Internet Society IGF Youth Amazon. Ambassador. I'm also representing Digital Grassroots, which is an organization that was born in one of the meetings of the IGF in 2017. And what we do, we provide online courses about digital literacy uh, for people among 14 and 29 years old. And in these courses, we are looking for uh, aware digital citizens that they can create an impact in their communities. One of our programs is the Digital Grassroots Ambassador Program, where we, are, we have as a goal to create more than 400 ambassadors each year. And we are very proud of every year having more and more ambassadors and more people willing to have their voice heard in these kind of events. And also I want to quickly mention the Community Leaders Program that it's uh, it's another program that we have that we want to create community, builder, uh, community leaders that will make uh, an impact in their communities. And now this year we have a new version of our program which is called the Open Leaders for Internet Health that we have the support of Mozilla to carry on with this project. So thank you. Thank you very much. I will take in two final contributions before I have to close the session, because, uh, yeah, let's keep the exchange after. And one more from Marius in the back. Right. Thank you very much. I will be short and brief. My name is Marius Zita. I work in the Council of Europe in the Youth Department. Somehow to give an answer to the challenge you raised, there are models on the European continent when it comes to youth participation that can be used and replicated and looked at. Within the Council of Europe, there is a brilliant mechanism of co-management where the government's representatives, meaning that 47 government representatives of the country members of the Council of Europe are getting together with the representative of youth organizations, which are getting together in their own mechanism. You have the privilege in here to have two representatives of the advisory council and the colleagues are here and also one representative of the government. So if you really want to develop and understand how it works, try to see who these persons are and try to see what they were doing, what they are doing and how we brought into the issue of the youth participation in the internet governance. Thank you very much, Marius. And I was already told by the guys from the next session that unfortunately we have to close the session. Thank you all for your meaningful contributions. I'm hoping we can just continue the conversation outside. There's going to be a lot more sessions and workshops that we can work on. We as the German Informatics Society will be at the Sustainability Corner every day from one o'clock on, or most of the time you'll find someone there. There's a lot of other sessions, Jenner for instance, and um, yes, from 12 o'clock we'll start our Twitter initiative under the hashtag IGF questions, so please retweet that. And thank you everyone, and let's make sure we continue.